welcome to Daytona in these group one prototypes. In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know to win the group one series prototypes race. One of three group one races to complete the menu book to earn yourself a six star roulette ticket. I will be covering the strategies and the car choices to win the other two races so make sure you're subscribed for those ones and for more other great Gran Turismo 7 content. For this race I use the new Toyota GR010 hybrid hypercar and it was pretty good it's probably not the best car for the race i think the key thing to use is a car that's really good fuel efficiency it allows you to make a one stop of this race and gives you an advantage over a lot of the other drivers what i did for my gr010 is to add the medium rpm turbocharger that's the most significant upgrade you need to do for this i also went ahead and bought the wet weather tires the intermediate tires the gearbox which I didn't actually bother customizing and just all of the stuff to make the car useful in the future for me. Uh, the setup that I used for this car, uh, basically we had obviously added the medium RPM turbocharger, uh, downforce I think I set to maximum, camber I made to one degrees all round, I didn't bother changing uh, the gear ratios. I'm going to start importantly on the racing hard tyres. Um, I will be switching to mediums later on in the race, uh, but the hard tyres to start the race to get me a long way into the race here. On screen right now is my setup. It's not perfect, but it worked quite well for me. And getting straight into the race, the first thing I do is set my fuel mix to lean six. You want to be going as far as you can on fuel. We've got the racing hard tyres. They're going to last us a long way, and we're going to go fuel mixture six to get as far as we can into the race. I think lap number six is when we pit nobody in this race can do a no-stop race so everybody's got to pit at least once but the car to be on the lookout for is the car is in the lead right now they're driving the mclaren the japanese driver uh, they're very good on fuel efficiency so they will pit quite late in the race and they'll only have to pit for a short amount of time to put a small amount of fuel back in the car so it's important to make your moves early a little bit of an aggressive move from us there on the ai driver slight contact no penalty awarded uh, but we're going to progress through the field now this toyota gr010 has really good top speed great acceleration not that great through the corners uh, skipping forward to lap number four now we're going to split the difference between these two guys on the straight and our top speed is immense we're on almost up to 360 kilometers an hour before we get it stopped into turn one around the outside of uh, wilk there i think um, and that's pretty good. We have played with the fuel mixture a little bit. We bumped it up to fuel mixture four, which probably was a mistake. I should have really gone a bit further on fuel maybe, um, but I wanted to push on and now we are just behind uh, the Japanese driver. That guy is the one to watch when you're completing your race. Pace yourself against him. So we've got uh, about a lap of fuel to go and I wanted to go one lap further to allow me to get onto the medium tires for the second stint. Uh, to do that, I've just changed the fuel mixture just a little bit, uh, off a little bit, down to five. Um, we're going to go on the outside, but it's going to come back on us. That McLaren has got fantastic acceleration, but we can actually blow it away on top speed. So we have managed to get to the front of the pack to take the lead of this race, but the pit strategy is going to be slightly in favour of that McLaren. And we're going to pit now and actually come into the pits with zero fuel. So I ran it a bit too tight on fuel strategy there. For this pit stop, the second part of the race, it's only four laps. So we're gonna use the medium tires to get a bit a bit of lap time uh, from those tires. They will start to wear as the race goes on, but they'll be okay. Uh, the diamond on your uh, bar there is where you should fill to finish the race. As long as you drive in the exact same manner that you drove up until the race, it's calculated based on previous driving. We're gonna overfill the car to make sure we are safe for fuel and it allows us to use a higher uh, fuel map if we need to uh, to catch up so we're going to exit the pits in eighth actually the leaderboard is all over the place i don't think it properly registers where you are until you actually get back onto the track and join the race again so yeah here we go out in sixth position 31 seconds off the lead of the race so it's quite a slow pit stop for us a lot of fuel had to go back back into that car probably using the fuel uh, mixture a little bit too aggressively on the way up but now we overfilled the car we can switch to fuel map four and start to come back uh, this is where uh, the japanese driver is going to pit he had 12 percent fuel 
left in there but if you look on this graphic continue looking at it you'll see how much fuel he puts back in and he only puts back 40 percent of fuel so it's quite a quick pit stop for the japanese driver um, and we're going to need to catch and pass him on the track bishop and hazal will go one lap longer on fuel but they will not play a factor because they will need to put a bit of fuel back in their car it's the japanese driver we need to look out for that mclaren seems very good on its fuel and he's going to go to the end of the race on that tank let's see how this one plays out as he, as he exits the pits and he is going to be ahead by about five seconds so his pit stop was probably about five or six seconds quicker than ours because of the amount of fuel he took on board um, so we're going to need to pass him catch him and pass him to win this race skipping forwards now towards the end of lap number eight and we do catch him on the track as we go through the bus stop chicane and exit uh, great uh, acceleration from the mclaren but it's got nothing nothing on our top speed now here we go the front two uh, bishop and his al have or are pitting um, so they'll be out of the running so this is a straight fight between me and the japanese driver in the mclaren and we have got track position now it might have been better to go one lap longer on the first stint because the medium tyres are starting to wear a little bit so we probably should have been more conservative with fuel strategy on the first stint gone to the end of lap number seven running to the line now to finish the race and we haven't really dropped the japanese driver we caught him and passed him with reasonable ease however he's latched onto the back of us so we need to make sure we kept that completely safe no mistakes we're going to get that win all of the gameplay footage we've got today is on the hard difficulty setting. If you have trouble beating this, you can lower the difficulty setting to medium or easy. And the credit payout and the, the, the completion of the menu book is still completely valid. You still pass that menu book. I've got to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed with that payout. It's a, it's a difficult race. It's one of the more difficult races in Gran Turismo 7. So let's summarise the key strategy things that allow you to win this race in Gran Turismo 7. You've got to pick a car with good fuel efficiency. Also run it with a very lean mix to try and extend it as much as you can. The fuel usage for this race is really quite high. One stop strategy is the best. Tire wear is also quite high. So if you're going to use the medium tyres, make sure you're only on them for four laps or so. Anything more than that and they'll be destroyed the driver to look out for in this race is the Japanese driver in the McLaren Miyazono he's the one that will most likely win the race on a very efficient fuel strategy so keep an eye out for him he's the person you need to pace yourself with after you pass him for the lead he likely will latch onto your gearbox and just shadow you for the rest of the race so make sure you are cautious and safe with your final laps in the race I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful in any way. If you have, hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you've got some of your own tips to share with your fellow racers as to what car you found best at this menu book race, then share them in the comments below. I'm always interested to hear what works well. I love these Group 1 cars. This Toyota GR010 hybrid hypercar is actually becoming one of my favourite cars to drive. I really enjoy racing with this car. On screen will be a link to another video which you may find very interesting. Thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.